Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Dear friends, I made this appear with the beautiful Rebecca Pfizer. She's an amazing chef. We are delighted in the heart of Napa Valley to have incredible talent. Teacher, consultant, extraordinary chef who started at Mustard and then evolved all the way to a great restaurant in Rue, mm -hmm. Rue yes. Saint Helena. Yes. And she's involved into teaching and developing amazing private chef events and naturally, of course, give back to the community, the Salvation Army. Yeah. She accepted to come in the torture. There was only one reason why she said yes. She said, can I have more 69? I did not really know what you meant when you said that. So I, I thought, have a feeling that you did. <laughs> well, it was just a thought. I was guided by our friend Dylan. Mm -hmm. You know, he's my good travels. friend Dylan. Yes, Isn't he, does. he great? Yeah. Uh -huh. He pretends he's behind the camera, but I think his I mean, imagination never stops. So, dear friend <laughs> Rebecca Pfizer, the chef you need to hire if you ever want to do a top end private party, an event, and everything dealing with food. Yeah, all things culinary. All Actually, things. and your company's named All Things Culinary. It's the coolest name, don't you think? She can do everything you want. So, how did you fall in love with food? You know, Jean Charles, I was graduating with a degree in advertising, and I was sitting in my living room and I was thinking to myself, I really don't want to do this. <gasps> what am I doing with my life? Just after the degree? Like two months before. Wow. And I grew up in New York City, where every great food was there to have and to behold. And I thought to myself, like yourself, I am a great party thrower and I love to entertain. And people would always come to my house to eat. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do. Wow. And so I changed what the direction. A, shift. a definite shift. So, Rebecca, I want to explain to all of us. Yeah. How is it a young 22-year-old at the time? Yes says, I spent four years on the advertising bench of the university. I'm throwing everything that I know mm -hmm. and I'm starting a new life. I and mean, that takes balls. It That's does. Whatever it is. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you just had an aha moment where suddenly everything made sense? Mm -hmm. To me, it was being in the kitchen. And so because I had had no experience to start in the kitchen in New York City, no one's going to hire you if you don't have any experience. Yeah, that's right. So I got a job washing dishes for free at a culinary school. And the first day there with my bachelor's degree in hand, washing dishes for free, I was just like, I've made it. And so you use both hands. So I both hope hands. you wash dishes this way, right? This way, so yes. So you touch yes. both sides. Yes. Good. <laughs> Just qualifying question because I've done a lot of washing dishes. Too. Yes, I'm sure you have. Yeah. Um, and so that experience just sort of led me to come to Napa Valley where I worked at Mustards. And then my career just unfolded from there. And did you always have such beautiful curly hair? I did. Isn't she charming? Oh. Dylan, can you get closer to look at this hairstyle? So you attach them always because I've seen you in many different you have, types of style. You have. Um, I don't want to get the hair in the food, so of I got to put it up. But are the curls natural? Yeah. Natural. Or you use this pasta machine? Yeah, pasta machine. I twirl, to, I twirl, to do the curls. I twirl it around. You put your just hair like in that. Just, just do like this. that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we may try that on mine before the end. Before the, the end moment. of the episode. <laughs> I'm worried because they will never grow again. So who knows? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So what? Um, you know, before we dive into this yeah. great recipe you have, what attracts you to food and, and makes you want to be part of the delight of life as such? So many different facets. Uh, one is entertaining people and seeing the smile on their face because the whole world communes around food. We yes. talk about it historically. We talk about it nutritionally. We talk about it in every aspect and it brings people together. I also like to forage. And so for me, going out into the wild and finding mushrooms and herbs and yes. flowers and medicines to incorporate into my food is something that I really love to do. And I think it's inspiring. And that's your creative side of your mind. It's, sure. it's definitely part of them. And so this, this recipe we're making today does have some foraged items here for you. Um, and then I also brought some cool things for you to smell and taste and take home. And so you can see what that's all about. I'm having shivers of excitement know. because you know, when you make things in life, it's exciting to discover. It's true. 
And, and always to put your nose, if, if that what excites you, for me, it's my nose. It's 80% of what I do. Then the moment I taste, it's, it's the consequence of what I've already felt. Yep. You know what that is? Oh. Ooh. Okay, and then that's the flower. Uh -huh. This is the syrup. <gasps> of the flower itself. Of the flower. Oh. Well, you may want to explain and then where we, you got those. I don't know. And then this is the syrup of the berry. Hmm, that's harder to guess. Ooh. Have you had elderflowers? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So yeah, so the thing with the elderflower syrup is in yeah. order to preserve it, you have to put some sweetener. And so in here we have some honey and some maple, maple syrup a little bit. Because you know, elderflower in Europe, not yes. only France, but Austria, Holland of all places mm -hmm. and the northern part of Belgium mm -hmm. is a big deal. So elderflower is in everything. And it was more apparent as in, we, yes. in the syrup and in the flour. Absolutely. Well, it's really good for the immune system. So That's you can right. make tea with it. You can make cocktails with it. And then the syrup, you tend to, you can use it on pancakes, but you can tend to just drink it or have some in the morning like vitamins. A lady of all seasons. I know. And you cook, your philosophy of cooking is with the seasons. With right? the seasons, farm to table, local as much as possible. Yes. Um, I, I, you know, I don't really think it makes sense to buy tomatoes in February. That's right. Unless you live in the southern hemisphere or something like that. And you but, fly them in. Right. You know, we have a lot of companies. It's not very responsible. I don't think so. I mean, we do have companies that are now growing food indoors yeah. where they want to sort of take the idea of seasonality out of the picture because they can manipulate the sun yeah. and the rays and all the chemicals uh, that they use to grow the stuff so that you get it all year round top quality i don't know it's nothing like picking a strawberry the first strawberry in spring right like i love what you've done yeah. the elderflower did you hear what rebecca said it's good for your immune system mm -hmm. we eat to prevent as well illness we just don't eat to fill our stomach that's true and it's so important if you read bria savana physiology mm -hmm. of taste that's a great it one. Teaches you, yeah. It's all about the sequence of the seasons. It is. Here, nothing. Some another sort of oh. edible delay. Potpourri. It's a potpourri of wild flowers and rose hips and mushrooms. Mushroom, yeah. For tea. You see, so I call, the, I call this the tea me. of life. The tea of life. Ooh. Because it's this has ingredients in it: mullein, yarrow, um, turkey tail mushroom, so many so, different things that are good for all. Besides parts of the life. mushroom, all the vitamin plants, yarrow. Yes, you heard it. Mm -hmm. Extremely good for the digestion. Yes, oh. it's good. Well, sometimes, and I did not rehearse. She told me nothing. <laughs> and look at this. Look at that. Good. If I want to do implants, this is what I need. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> I don't know why it made me think of this. The great shape, the beauty of, you Just know. Give it to me. Okay, okay thank you. It's better in your hands. <laughs> Whatever is round. Uh, okay, this well, is I will dispute that. We're going to make some pierogies today. Uh, pierogies yes. are a dumpling from Eastern Europe. Um, they also make them in Russia. They call them pierogies, and they usually fill them with meat, cheese, mushrooms, grains, sauerkraut, oh. all different things, sometimes also fruit. And so what we're going to fill them with is some duck confit, which mm. I made over here. So we've got a, the I duck leg oh, that is uh, cured. Is it the left or the right? For me, it's very important. <laughs> I'm one, from the one, right to the left. This one is the left. It looks like the Did left. Did you have them trained for the Olympics? I mean, that's a big, beautiful Yeah, I leg. called them by name. Oh. Yes. What's um, her name? Is it a she or he? Uh, Donna. Oh, Donna, good. Is that good? I only eat cheese, so that's... Okay, there we know. go. Did I really say that? Yes, you did. So we cure the duck legs, and then we cook it in its own fat really low and slow, and then we pick the meat apart, so it's yeah. really delicious and well, tender. And, and I'm delighted that you're doing it this time of the year, duck yeah. confit, because for all of us French, this is the fall season. This is, is a big fall. deal. Mm -hmm. And how do you do confit? So cure the duck leg with salt, peppercorns, mm -hmm. maybe some other spices. I like to put thyme and garlic yes. and juniper berries. Oh, juniper berries. And then berries. salt it and put the herbs and spices on there and then press it overnight, refrigerate it. Oh. Then you rinse it and then you take the duck fat or you could use a different kind of fat if you like, but traditionally it would be duck fat. And then you 
cook it completely submerged in the duck fat at very low temperature in the oven. For what? Three hours, I was gonna say, four, yeah, hours, four hours, yeah. and then you let it cool in the fat. And so traditionally this was a way to preserve the duck or any kind of meat because the fat on top creates a hermetic seal where oxygen can't get in. So when they didn't have refrigeration, this was the way that you would preserve your meats. So well explained. It's a delicious way to preserve and meat. And I'm delighted you heard that because in fact, everybody thinks confit is very fattening. You don't then use the fat. No, not so necessarily. So explain, it's for preservation and cooking. And then you, t and then you melt it away. That's right. Um, could you use that duck fat? Sure, use it for cooking potatoes or other items. And reuse it. For sure. In for sure. professional kitchen as you've been. 100%. And you can use it to make another batch of confit. You just need to be careful that the salt content, after batch after batch after batch, doesn't get too high. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad. I did not know the recipe. Today was a full surprise. Ooh. And I love being surprised because it's so much more fun. And I'm looking at this duck confit. You got to see how beautiful it looks. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shall I tease you? Yeah. Sure. Can I? I think you should. I'm stealing a piece. I think you should. Mm. Mm. Just by itself. Who needs a perversion? Phenomenal duck. Where did you get the duck? Uh, I got it at Browns Valley Market. Very nice. Yeah, it's Mary's, so they're good quality. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And typically organic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the other filling that's going into the duck confit is some apples. So I know that you grow uh, black Arkansas apples and Pippin apples and that's you right. make your uh, cider from that. So we're going to try that. Talking about this. Talking about the cider. Like tea. And then there's some sage and onion. And then there's another wonderful uh, foraged item here. These are called candy cap mushrooms. So now we're getting mushroom season is coming upon yeah. us. These are a little bit later season one, but this one has a really special aroma to it as well. Mm. It smells wow. like maple syrup. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was gonna go leather, sure. leather caramel, sure. evolved honey. And you know which is great. Like wine. So 10 years at the CIA. 10 years? I mean, pretty amazing. CIA, dear friends, is the Culinary Institute of America. And mm -hmm. I know many of you are in Europe or Africa or Asia and you're with us. It's a pretty amazing organization. It is. We have uh, four campuses around the world, three here in, in the United States, one in Singapore. So I taught the professional program for 10 years. That's right. I also am very involved still in the consulting department and videos and developing recipes for clients. And right now I'm just teaching uh, folks, let's say you wanted to come and take a class at the CIA at Copia, you could come and take, take a class from me. And so that's what yeah. I'm doing now, uh, part time, it's just great. I said I don't have to yeah, grade, you have I don't have to grade business, anybody. <laughs> you create your own events, yeah. and phenomenal. But that's cool. I mean, a woman chef entrepreneur. Yeah. How does it feel actually, as we're going to start the recipe, to be a woman in the kitchen? You know, it's been a tough road. I would say you have yeah. to be strong. Um, I notice now mm. that we have a lot more women in the kitchen and I think that's due definitely towards uh, social media and television and it being a little bit more of a sought after career, yeah. um, but you gotta have And why is that? Components. Why? Because it's long hours, standing yeah. on your feet, you got a lot of... Uh, yeah, but women are more resistant than men anyhow. They say so, I believe so, and I think that most women that you'll find in the kitchen probably have more stamina and complain I, less than most of the men. I find. <laughs> well, I had a big influence with my grandmother's mother's sister, sure, hours sure. in the kitchen, so... Yeah. But why, in addition to that, is it tough eventually? Um, I don't know. I think because women also maybe feel a little bit more towards having families and hungering mm -hmm. down. I, I don't know. I don't have children. I have a delightful cat and a beautiful boyfriend and awesome friends. And so for me, it was conducive to my lifestyle because of how I wanted to live That's my right. life. But um, I have girlfriends who are great chefs that have children and it's very hard to juggle. But I've seen, yeah. you know, at the CIA, a sure. ton of young ladies students, oh, yeah. or all the lady students or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. People want to transition in the kitchen, I'm thrilled. They do. There's a lot of different avenues though you can take now. It's not just about being a chef. That's you want right. to be a writer, a blogger, a photographer, a recipe development. There's so many different things you can do. Maybe a food scientist even. That's it. So we, we'll try wine later yeah. made by a lady. Sure. And we have an incredible team, ladies, 
for us at all our wineries and vineyards. And we believe, I believe it. Well, and they're amazing in terms of taste profile as a liquid. Mm -hmm. Solid. Are women as amazing as they are as winemakers in the kitchen? I think yes. I better think sometimes, I don't know about better, but I think women tend to have a, an attention to detail. Yeah. And also maybe there's something inherent about wanting to prove I'm just as good as if not better. Yeah. Right. And so I, I've seen some of the best chefs come out of any kitchen that I've worked in be women. For sure. Oh, sorry. You are. She's one of them. But thank you for answering honestly on this because, yeah. you know, we have so many ladies passionate into as well transitioning from what they do today. Mm -hmm. They could be doing advertising as well. They, they could. could be in finance. And they say, you know what? I want to be a chef, I want to be in the kitchen, I want to be in hospitality, I want to be in the wine business. And often, you know, it's not intimidation, it's just having that je ne sais quoi that tells you I'm going to do it, I'm going for it. That aha moment. That's it. Mm -hmm. And you are really representing that so well as a teacher at the CIA. And, and, and also, you know, I, I'm my giving back, I yes. teach, I teach, um, other people how to cook, not just people who have a lot of money. Yes. And so uh, you're familiar with the Salvation Army oh, culinary training program. We love the Salvation Army. I know. So I wrote that program. and um, Chef Paul? Well, I wrote the program and then Chef Paul came on board and um, I explained to him, you know, here's what we're going to do. Here's how it's going to go. And he took it and he ran with it because wow. he's amazing. I'm so excited. Yes. And your friends will tell you more in a second about this insane, phenomenal it's great. Incredible organization that we, we hope we have all over the nation and in more countries. We do. That's the goal all... is that it will ex this program will expand um, throughout the country. And yeah. so we're looking forward to that. Um, and I also just really, the idea that chefs always talk about giving back. There's a mm -hmm. few chefs out there, famous chefs that do, Jose Andres, and he has the World Kitchen. And Love it. That's amazing. Um, but I think that more chefs need to walk the walk rather than just talk the talk about giving back. Yeah. And so this was one way that I gave back. Um, another way now, I just started a program called Grey Haven in Napa, which serves an underserved population of adults who have in some way, shape or form passed through the justice system due to mental health disorders. So we're a reentry program, wow. reentry program for those adults to get back into the world and live like normal folks, just like the folks with the Salvation Army. And so um, maybe you're familiar with the Eliza Yant mansion Absolutely. in downtown. So it's just been refurbished to hold this Grey Haven organization. And so oh, we're teaching folks about nutrition and good food and good eating habits, as well as a few little culinary techniques so that when they do go out and live on their own, they will be very successful at it. Ha, huh. brilliant. Yeah. And, and besides being brilliant, congratulations for doing it. Thank and you. And wanting to do it and giving your time to do it. As you say, walking the walk, mm -hmm. because it's very easy to talk on camera or in yeah. a public speech and you mm -hmm. say, I wish to do this. Mm -hmm. Or at a dinner table, I want to change society. But yeah. what the hell are you doing for it? And, right. and just doing it. More of us need to do it. Yeah. So Agreed. You're doing it. Well, for sure. Really well. We love doing it. And, and, you know, the world of wine is about sharing. I agree. And food for us is to share the love, share the passion. Try you know, the moment you don't share, there's nothing in life. Mm -hmm. And you can put that in your sauce if you Thank want. Thank you for sharing. We're about to serve you like a petite. Oh. I'm going to use your beautiful red wine for our sauce because the sauce has huckleberries. We, we are we are welcome. Yeah, so here's some huckleberries from Mendocino County that I foraged Ooh. for. Ooh. Delish. Wow. So Look how good looking yes. they are. Small and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And well, we may want to start. I'm going to serve you the cat tea. Sounds good. I'm going to be back with you as I'm grabbing the okay. tools, the vessels, unless you want to drink out of the bottle, but maybe later. Maybe later. So dear friends, La Captive, Sonora County, California. You were talking about the absolute privilege we have mm. of being able to eat local, to have amazing ingredients, to have all what you have on this amazing counter. Same with apples. It's true. Hey, Brian Maloney is a magician. He's a winemaker and cider maker. Awesome. He's made this beautiful 7% only alcohol. Gravestein Gala 
and I think I read he grows uh, black Arkansas and pippins and a whole That's bunch of variety. That's it. Black right? Arkansas as well. Pippin. Nice. Wow, this is so nice. We've never presented the cider ever on the show. Today's the first time. I'm excited to uh, be the flagship. And maybe we should cook with it too. Maybe. Maybe we'll put a little bit of it in the filling for the pierogi, wow. and then the sauce will have their we'll the make red a wine. lot of sense. Yes. So should we get started? Let's go. All right. I'm, well, I'm mesmerized by this beautiful level of ingredients. I All know. that, the alchemy of your style and talent. Thank you. Together. You know, I think if, if we really were going hungry here in Napa Valley, all we'd have to do is go outside our front door and we would be very well fed just by what the, the trees and the plants have to offer us. So for the filling, I want you to mix in here the duck coffee. So I'm going to do the work? Do, the work. The do I go full force? Full force, full force. Full force. And then I have a I'm spoon. shy sometimes. But oh, I have a hard time I'm going to use that. my right hand and my beautiful wrist. Look at that. Hey, one shot. What up? The apples what? and the these are the um, candy cat mushrooms that have been chopped up. All in. All Bang. in. All in. Look at that. There's a spoon in Voila. It's so fun to mix and create, isn't it? It is, and it's fun. It's fun to teach people how to do it too. So this recipe, Rebecca, is your own creation. Yes. I love it. So at night, when you dream, besides your, do I dream? You said your beautiful boyfriend and all yes. that. Do you dream about recipe too? You know, if something has uh, piqued my interest during the day, it's very possible. You take notes or how do you do that? I take notes up here. Really? Yeah, somebody, somebody gives me an ingredient or I find something on the side of the road or in this case, the inspiration was the uh, cider and the red wine. Yes. And I got the tasting notes for that and I said, okay, here's what I'm gonna do that's seasonal and also showcases the bounty of what we have to offer. <gasps> It's still as good as it was, but maybe even better. Awesome. And I'm not going to add salt here because the duck confit itself yeah. is, is salty. Um, and then mm. also the dough has some salt. And then we're going to boil them in some salted water. So we're just going to leave that. And what um, kind of salt do you use? Is it kosher salt? Um, we like kosher salt mostly because we can see the, the granules. And you can hold it really well in your hand. And so when you spread it, you can see how much is there mm -hmm. versus if I use iodized salt or fine sea salt, the moment that you put it on something, it dissolves and it's hard to tell how much is there. Plus, if I try to pick it up, it's a little bit like sand and it might, you know, kind of fall through my fingers. So it wouldn't be, so, wouldn't be such a bad great, thing. Great, great, great. All okay, right. So one other thing we're going to do here is we're going to make a gremolata. So maybe you should do the other bowl, but the gremolata traditionally is something if you've had asabuco before, has uh, parsley, lemon, zest, garlic, and olive oil. Um, so She's I looking at me for garlic because the French are just... Well, I'll tell you where the garlic's going to come. I have these little society garlic flowers that we're going to oh. use for garnish. They're garlicky. Great, so great we'll, idea. We'll use that instead. I was going to say garlic idea, but yeah. So I want you to put into the bowl here the uh, olive oil. So I got extra virgin olive oil. I'm following directions. I love to listen so to well. a woman chef. Um, as much as I love you, Rafa, uh -huh. I listen to Rebecca. These are toasted and chopped hazelnuts, which I thought would go really nicely with some mm. of the oak aging that you have going on. And you toasted them um, yourself as well in the oven? In the oven, wow. yeah. And then lemon juice, lemon zest. Myers lemon, I'm taking. And uh, not Myers, just quite a regular lemon. Yeah. And then some. Myers would be too strong. Myers would be not acidic enough. Meyer lemon are cross between uh, an orange or a tangerine and uh, lemon, and so it's a sweeter, um, delicious nonetheless. But I want a little bit of acidity mm, because I think the acidity will go well with either one of these beverages. It needs a, just a little bit. In Do there. I keep going? Keep going. There's a spoon, All of it. There's a spoon right there. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. You see, a man could be shy in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, and then here's another forage product that we're going to put in there. This is uh, fennel pollen. So I, love I, I know that it's interesting to folks anywhere else but California, but fennel pollen is very expensive. We here in California, if I buy fennel pollen in the store for $10 for a little bit, I'm 
missing out on life. I don't really understand because fennel grows wild everywhere. Yeah. So the beautiful white yellow flowers bloom um, in the late summer, early fall, and then you harvest the flowers, you dry yeah. them, and you fresh them, and then you got that. Wow. Nope, a little bit. Just a pinch. Just a little just bit. Just a pinch, because that's pretty strong. Yeah. Maybe a little more. Yeah. A little more. A little See, it's great to have a teacher on your side, aren't we lucky? Yeah. And I hope one day, dear friends, you you replay this fabulous moment with Rebecca. Yeah. And you do this uh, incredible recipe because confit. Ooh, a little pinch of salt. Perfect. I can yep. see it yep. as you describe it. There you it. go, right like that. Voila. Perfect. So that's done. So we're just going to set she that aside. She was testing me to see how well I can listen to orders. 100%. You see. Next thing we're going to do before we roll the pierogies is we, I want to get the sauce going. Uh -huh. Okay, so the sauce is really simple. Let me move my beverage out of the way. We are having a live <laughs> session with Rebecca. Here, I want you to put uh, the huckleberries. Yes, all. All of them. I'm going to try them. Mm -hmm. mm. So a little wine in there. No. Nope. No, not yet. No, nope, not yet. Mm. Almost tastes like it. Look at this concentration. Right? Love it. Um, I've got some thyme and a little cinnamon stick. So I do it this way? You can just throw the whole thing in the there. The whole thing, okay. Mm -hmm. The whole thing too? The whole thing. Cinnamon. And oh. then this is some of your delicious red wine that we're showcasing here. Perfect. I just wanted We to just wanted to make sure it's okay. Dear friend, this is Lee Meritage. Yes. From Alexander Valley, Sonoma Kelly. Made by another great lady, Katie Carter. Awesome. Katie, we're thinking of you, and we know you are watching with us. Perfect. Look at your wine. If you cannot drink it, cook with it. 100%. And if you can't drink it, don't cook with it. Touche. Right. I love that stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're going to put this on the stove, and we're going to let that reduce Oops. and um, get the huckleberries kind of breaking down a little bit, mm -hmm. reduce the concentration of the flavors and get rid of the alcohol that's yeah. in the wine. And then we'll finish that with some butter a little bit later on. So Rebecca, yes. uh, would you be so kind to tell us where do you see in America? Mm -hmm. You deal with students, mm -hmm. CIA, you deal with the Salvation Army, you deal with your new center you're developing, you deal with phenomenal restaurants and chef, yeah. you do phenomenal parties and private events. Mm -hmm. Where is taste evolving in America? Where do you see going? Globally. Mm -hmm. We are becoming global because we have the ability now to travel. And if yeah. we can't travel monetarily or financially, doesn't work for our budget, we can just open up the computer and Google anything in the world. Okay. And we can bring the world to us. And so suddenly all of these foods that were maybe considered peasant foods or considered unreachable, we can get anything at our doorstep within yes. two days. If you wanted to order some exotic ingredient. So you travel through food. You, you can, 100%. Yeah. I love to travel anyhow. And for me, um, whenever I travel someplace, I'll always go to the central market. And if you really want to see how people live, That's like right. the window to a culture is go to the market and see how people are eating and buying and what time they wake up in the morning to go shopping. And the best way to see what a culture is all about. I love mm -hmm. it. I'm so glad you say that. I mean, the most famous besides the traditional wine we know in France or in Italy or in Spain is the fish market in Tokyo. 100%. I mean, wow. To look at a market and how people eat and what they eat and uh -huh. what restaurant buys and, and consumer buys, it's, it's insane. It's right? insane. Yeah. Same thing would go for me. Like one place I've been that really exemplified that was the central market in Athens. Mm. It's enormous. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. One one whole building devoted Costco size to all the dry goods and the fruits and the vegetables. A whole, another whole building to the fish and another whole building to the meats. And it spills out into the into the streets. And it's it's really phenomenal. So the aroma as you walk around. And the visuals that you see. Yeah. Things that maybe you don't see here in this country. Animals that still have their tails and their um, their innards. Are we too strict on that USDA? That we are. Health? Uh, of my opinion is we are. Yeah, for um, sure. I think we're so sanitary in this country that it causes us to get much, much more susceptible to all of these you know, diseases and things that in other parts of the world doesn't really By being make. extreme. By being are, extreme. I agree with you. We refrigerate our eggs because we wash them really well versus the rest of the world doesn't wash them the same way and the protective coating on the egg 
I mean, I'm even looking, you have your eggs sitting right over there, straight, sure. straight from the hens. Straight. You can let them sit over there on the counter for a month well, if you want to. And you know, the chickens are watching, so if we put them in the cold, they would not be happy. No, we wouldn't want them pecking at the door. Okay. But that's, uh, <laughs> well, that's, dear friends, I think yeah. a very important evolution of time. Mm -hmm. is I feel as well, food is a defense mechanism, as yes. we said earlier. Mm -hmm. Eat the season. From the season, you prevent the next season coming. And your system, as your human body, builds that defense mechanism. 100%. You know, we're in the fall right now. You have the fall products from where you're from. And it helps you to transition to the next season. And we, we so much want to have the exotism of having what is not in season, that we have tasteless, non-sustainable, Product. And very far carbon footprint products. That's very true. And we're missing the identity of the region. Those that grow together go together, right? All right. What did you think of the cider, by the way? I think it's delicious. Yes. Let's go. Let's what have did a little me more. make you, you think? Pour a little more. I, um, hear I like you. how I like how crisp it is. You, you're the first one ever in history trying a cider. Wow. Seven percent alcohol only. I love how crisp it smells, but also how crisp it is on the palate. Mm. And we make it as a méthode champenoise, mm -hmm. same as the top ciders in France. Awesome. Normandy, Massif Armoricain, and obviously Brittany, the, the top games of all the top ciders. And why La Capti? Because we capture the apple. Is it oak? Is there no oak? oak. No? Okay. Yeah, but it feels like A little it. bit. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. mm. It's what we call a hard cider. Right? I think this will go really well with our, Perfect. With our filling here. All right. So why don't we roll some pierogi dough? Um, the difference of pierogi dough and pasta dough is just that the pierogi dough has in it some fat um, in the form of sour cream, okay. as well as some butter. No fat from the duck. No fat. You know what? You could put I've the fat from the duck in here. Before. You can. Yeah. Hundred percent. Could See, you could do that? See, it was a tricky question from the chef. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Who's there in the kitchen, by the way? Never ever. So we're but, gonna. Mm -hmm. uh, so this. Dough, do you mind if I try a tiny please. bit? Please. I'm a like fan me, of, of dough. Uh, I don't know how you are in such great shape. I would be a full-time chef. I would honestly be like a beautiful French barrel <laughs> because I would want to oh. taste everything. Yeah, because if there's a plate coming out, I want to make sure it's exactly what I'd imagine. Well, for me, I think it's because I'm tasting all the time. Mm. By the time it comes to sit down and eat, I'm, I may not want to eat the full meal because I've yeah. already been eating the whole time. Mm. So there's, there's you salt. You know what it's good when mm. you can eat it. There's salt and the, sour, the sourness from the sour cream. Yeah. And then there's also some white pepper in there. Mm. So I think the white pepper also is kind of something that will bring some of the well spice with the, with the wine. So what we're going to do, we're going to roll it out on the pasta roller. If you don't have this, you could use a, a rolling pin, no mm -hmm. problem. Um, and maybe, yeah. so I'm going to show you a trick. Oh, please. And I'm going to need to find a cork, which I'm sure I can find. And I know it will appear because I'm like a magician. Uh-huh. And someone will throw it to me because Danelle is close by. Look at that. <laughs> and I'm going to show you yes. something. As a boy, my mother said, oh, we don't have a roller in wood or in beautiful marble. Jean Charles, use a bottle of wine, for God's sake. 100%. You could do it. So look at what I'm doing. I'm rolling. I, I will have to tell you that I've done this many a time. So my daughter's... Not too long ago, we were making cookies. In mm -hmm. fact, with the fabulous Danelle, an incredible mixologist. Mm -hmm. And she, we broke the roller. So my daughters are looking at each other, twins. <gasps> See, the end of the day, we're gonna, not going to make cookies. And I said, ladies, we have a lot of empty bottles of wine. Yeah. Let's go for Let's it. Let's do it. So in any case, I just prepared it. As you can see, the bottle even looks better. Maybe we should have snowflakes on the package. <laughs> I think you could probably, a lot of Italian ravioli molds, they, they imprint um, oh. in, in the dough. Maybe you could uh, market that. Cool idea. Yeah. So that we prepared. We prepared. It's ready to go in the roller. It's so good. if you if you we have- We make a great team. Maybe oh, we open- I love it. We're going to open our own restaurant here. We're going to open our own show. show. Go clockwise, yeah. 
Okay. Clockwise. Mm -hmm. Because if I go counter, I create chaos. <laughs> We're creating energy. Yep. Look at that. Woo! Okay. So we're going to pull that out. And if this it gets so too tacky, cool. you will add more flour. So we're going to go down one, and you're going to go again. Go again. Go again. Luckily, you're with me because the last time I did that, it. Now pull it, grab it with your other hand. Okay. Yeah. God gave me two. Yes, you did. Maybe there's Thankfully, more. only two. Well, well, who knows? I'd love to be <laughs> reincarnated as a Shiva. Ooh, that would be awesome. So we're going to go down another couple of notches. Okay. We want it to be thin enough that it's not going to be too doughy. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, certain dumplings are supposed to be all about dough because dumplings are like yeah. food of sustenance, right? When you didn't have anything, you got flour and water, make a dumpling. But um, we don't want this to be to fill us up uh, just so on dough. Yeah, so you pull the knob out and then you turn it to um, the next level down. Wow. And then it engages. Okay, we'll go again. Very. Very cool. Yeah, and if it gets too long, you can cut it. Um, Does it ever Unless you long? want your friends to all line up along the hallway and have this long piece of dough. Sounds like something you might want to do. It's a celebration. Yeah, for sure. Feels like a red carpet coming out. I know. So this is good. This yeah. is a good thickness here. So we went down on my machine to number five, but your machine might be different. Um, I'd say it's about a sixteenth of an inch, of an inch wide. Look at this beautiful scarf. Yeah. <laughs> You can put it on? Yeah. <laughs> there this. we go. Let's go to the party. <laughs> Good costume. I'm going to go as a pierogi this year. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to cut the cut the circle. Okay. So this is a, a ring mold cutter. If you didn't have this, you could use a glass. Um, Do I put a drinky glass. Uh, let's just put them right over here. I'm gonna if I knew I was going to work so hard today. So hard. Typically, I love to watch. I'm not a voyeur in that sense. But I love to watch the chef in the kitchen. Frankly, nope. going to to yeah. restaurant, it know, gives you an appreciation. Oh, to the chef table, I love it. Hundred percent. And seeing as well everyone in the kitchen, you know, moving. It's like a dance. It's a dance. It's I so remember. Theatrical. I remember the long nights on the on the line in the restaurant. You're like me, dough. Mm. It's a. I love dough. Me too. So, and um, all the dough here that we've cut away, you can yes. re-roll it. Um, you just want to let it sit and relax a little bit because otherwise it'll be too chewy. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So, we won't, you know, you can make a ton of these. You can make them as big or as small as you like, but we're just going to make a few of these here. Here, let's make another one just so that yeah, our, just to, our staff to make sure has we have a, a, a plenty, plenty for everyone to try. So, in terms of... Um, the evolution of ingredients as mm -hmm. well. Is there things you've discovered recently that you advise all of us to, to play with in the kitchen? I don't know, some friends tell me, oh, I discovered saffron, I discovered elderflower as an example. Sure. I discovered this and that. Ingredients? I'd say maybe- That you think are starting to make an enormous difference in the world of food. How about a technique? Oh, yeah. So, so a vacuum sealer. If you have a food saver uh, in the professional world, we call it a cryovac. Yeah. Yeah. They're mm. wonderful tools, not just for preserving food, but also you can change the texture of yeah. food by using it. So I could take, say, watermelon mm -hmm. and put it into the food saver and then vacuum seal it. That's right. And the water will compress out compress and out. then the texture of the watermelon will suddenly be different. Yeah. Or you can infuse marinades really fast. Or you can cook in that bag in some simmering water. That's it. There's so much you can do with it. So I think that that's a pretty innovative tool. Plus the the machines themselves have really come down in price. Yeah. And so. And the sous vide. Yes. And um, you know what? If you didn't have so it sous vide means under vacuum. And so we've we've if we use the food saver. We can effectively just put it in simmering water rather than having to get the fancy uh, thermocirculator, which keeps it at a constant temperature. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you were savvy enough and watched it, you could keep it at a pretty good temperature. You will so. never believe, as a student, mm -hmm. younger, I mean, just a few years ago, to be honest. Yeah. I used to do on Sunday my preparation for the week as a sous vide. Oh. Perfect. We it was very big in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, in France, really the sous vide. It's been around. Since I did the 50s. it this way rather than we didn't have a machine, obviously. It's been around since the fifties. Yeah. You know, 
Um, anyway, okay, so let's uh, let's make the pierogies. So here's what we're gonna do. I have this little, mm. we don't wanna fill it all the way, okay? Yes. But what I want you to do yes. is take some of the filling, yes. and maybe fill it part of the way with a little bit of everything in there. Right. Okay. And I, it's like an ice cream cup. It is, it is. Now, now pierogies tend to be kind of overstuffed. They're not, they're not really... It's uh, like empanadas. Yeah, like really stuffed, okay? Yes. So this dough is going to get a little bit stretched. Yes. You could make them bigger too if you wanted to, but there's kind of a, a technique to do this, all right? Mm -hmm. You're going to take some water. Yeah. You're going to put it around the edge. There's something in the water, a little salt or no? Uh, no, just water, a just water. Water. A little sparkling wine. You sure you a could do GCD that if you wanted to. You're gonna use your thumb. Oof, that's very technical. Yes, watch, watch. If you need your thumb, you're gonna push it, push it forward. Oof. And when you get the dough over, Oof. look what I'm doing. I'm gonna. Oh, oh my god, I'm gonna. I'm it. gonna push with my fingers here to seal it. It's gorgeous. Okay. It's lovely. Now you could leave it like this. Dear friends, look at how cute it looks. <laughs> it's only Rebecca's touch. Can you imagine? In about 20 seconds, she did it. Like a master ravioli, like an empanada. Totally. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like people always ask, what's your favorite food to make? And I always say fresh pasta or some kind of version of it. Because for me, um, th there's nothing more versatile in the food yeah. world than pasta. Every culture has some version of it. Yeah. And did the French can... invent pasta? You know, or the Egyptian. Okay, he, uh, n none of us were there, so I can't really say for sure. But the story you goes. How diplomatic she is. I try to be. So the story goes that either the Chinese invented it, Marco Polo found it, and brought That's it back right. to Europe. Who knows? Yes. Some people say that the Etruscans, who were the ancient, yes. the ancient oh. Italians, were the ones that. Um, they'd make something that was sort of like hard polenta, if you've ever had hard polenta before, like a polenta cake that's grilled or fried or something mm -hmm. like that. Yes. And maybe a little too I'm much gonna filling be fired. for you. <laughs> I'm going to be fired from the kitchen. Oh, so when you have too much filling, you just eat it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow. So we're going to push that. It's pretty If you, if you have trouble, it's no problem. Uh -huh. No problem. I feel too much. I wanted a lot in there. Yeah. So we'll put the ones that are done yeah. on this floured little tray over here. Okay. Well, obviously. You're, you're fine. You're yeah. Fine. It's perfect. It's I'm perfect. getting an F. You're, it's perfect. F, just don't, F, just don't maybe cry. F. Just don't I'm getting cry. a D plus for trying. <laughs> you get oh. an A plus for trying and you get, you get, you're fine. So when we talk about um, cooking, mm -hmm. um, this pandemic has been exciting and positive for one thing that everybody Cooking. everybody yeah. wants to cook so what have people been doing and what do you think should people continue to do well after this is over one thing that i did during the pandemic yes. was you know i don't know about you but a lot of my friends and i would get together for like online zoom happy hours yeah and um we kind of got bored of just doing the happy hour thing and we're okay. like we should be doing something with our time rather than just you know doing happy hour yes so i thought all right well why don't i show you guys how to make crepes how to make crepes oh okay. so we did so we made crepes everybody bought the same ingredients and i taught everybody live how to make crepes. Ooh. And then people were like, when are we gonna do that again? So I started teaching these online cooking classes to my friends, it started out that way. And the entrance fee to do the class was that you had to donate to the charity of choice every month, or every class, which was pretty much weekly I that I chose. It. So we donated about, I think over the course of about four months, um, about $3,000 to this different food, food related charities. So but this is great. Yeah, so that was really fun and it was wow. it was rewarding. And then that kind of turned into, you know, the online cooking business. And I think that has excelled and taken off like crazy. So suddenly, you know, everybody is a professional chef online and you take yeah. classes from people, yeah. right? Um, what I would just say is like, you know, be careful who you take the classes from because I think there's something to be said about like mentorship. 
Yeah. Somebody that really knows what they're talking about versus somebody who read it on Wikipedia and then is just rehashing mm -hmm. the information, right? So can I? She's going to correct. Can I, can I set this one aside? Yeah. Is that okay? So mine is set aside. I haven't been chosen. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to make one more. I'm going to make one more. You're you're all right. I don't want to get flour in your face. Okay. 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 I'm I won't make... cry. <laughs> it's so emotional. <laughs> I'm being rejected be, is not easy. You're not. You're being just... I'm just okay. being we put learn, aside. We learn from our failures, right? Isn't that That's crazy? right. Well, I hope. It hasn't happened to me much. I failed more than, you know. You, you don't. You, you know what? I think you probably have excelled from all of your failures. Well. All right. So, so now we I've have... have got enough here to, for us here in the kitchen to, to try. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that they're really well sealed. Mm -hmm. If you wanted... We could do a little decorative edge. Yeah. Um, that would take a lot of time, but I'll show you how to do one of them. Cool. Sort of like, like an empanada. Little, an empanada. Like yeah. a little empanada. You like empanadas? I do. I do. What's your biggest, uh, Rebecca, discovery in food for you, let's say, in the last 36 months? Because okay. you've been teaching, experiencing, you've been trained French, of course, too, mm -hmm. and all of the above. So the you teach at the French discovery. Institute, too. No, I, I've had friends that have though. Yeah. yeah, a good friend of mine, she was a wine instructor at the French Culinary Institute for a long mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. when I was living in New York. Um, biggest discovery in food. I'd have to think about that one. For me, it's been Indian. Ah. I've always loved Indian, but I had the pleasure to go to India so many times. Awesome. And the amount of flavors and aroma. We just for eat sure. curry and saffron. There's so many more. Oh my gosh, so much. It's insane. You're Indian right. Cuisine, right? It is. Um, you know, I like North African cuisine. Mm -hmm. Similarly, it uses a lot of spices. So That's Moroccan right. food and Tunisian food. Um, I think Moroccan food for me is really special because um, it's the it's the more elevated version of North African food yes. because there's because of the um, European influence Agreed. of the people that live in yeah. Morocco, right? Well, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. I, I would dream, frankly, for someone in, in Northern California, again, yeah. to make amazing couscous, amazing tagine. And you know someone? You? Let's do it! I'll show you how to make couscous from scratch. We have a date, dear oh, friends. Oh, awesome. And Danelle and Jen and Dylan are with us tonight. Okay. They witnessed, because you know, it's very French. When you ask the French, yeah. remember one dish they favor. Can you believe it's couscous? Couscous? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, it's so diverse it's, it's like, and healthy. And it's pasta. Yeah. That's the thing. It's pasta, and you know, like I said before, it's 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 like this comfort food that everybody loves, right? Did you notice Rebecca's movement? She's cleaning as things I warm up, she... as things get ready. No, but I love that because. What makes the kitchen so exciting, don't you think? It's discipline. It is discipline. And a lot of people have likened being in the kitchen to being in the military. Yeah. Right? And you have to be disciplined and you have to clean. You would want, say, let's say we were cooking together. Yes. And well, let's, weren't we? Let's, let's, let's hypothetically. Say, you see, I got and, another F minus. Um, I got a phone call, very important phone call, where I hurt myself and I had to leave. Yeah. I would want you to be able to see what is happening over here and make sense yes. of it. And it not look like some craziness has happened. That's There's right. a, a, if you've read Anthony Bourdain, mm -hmm. um, he has this, can I take your hand? Yes. He has this, he has this famous uh, part in the book where he talks about, open your hand. The chef came over to the cook station and it was so messy. He put his hand down on the table and he made him look at his hand and he's, there's parsley and garlic and chicken and all kinds of breadcrumbs, everything. He goes, this is what your brain looks like right now. Yeah. And I, so wow. I always think about that and I'm like, you know, if that's what is happening up here and, it, and you can see it down there, no one else is going to make sense of it. Plus, now that we have um, open kitchens mm -hmm. and people can see the chef's cooking, yeah. you don't want to see. What do you think of this concept of open kitchen? Um, I think it makes the chef more disciplined. Yes. Um, because they have to be clean. Yeah. Um, some people don't want to know. There's a lot of diners that would rather just not know because there mm -hmm. is something about the mystery of going to the restaurant. It's things yeah. that you can't do at home, right? That's if right. I, I don't tend to order chicken that much when I go out because I can cook chicken at home pretty well. That's right. So I'll tend to order something I can't do. And I think for the diner, it's, 
can be very similar. One thing the pandemic has changed, though, I think that there is this sort of resurgence of comfort food and the things that make us feel good. Yes. Wild and crazy fancy food is not as popular, I don't think. And you'll find a lot of famous chefs that are cooking cuisines that are not their normal cuisine. They're opening up taco trucks. They're doing things very differently than they have before. That's right. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right. So I'm going to. Okay. Gonna, so we, the final stage. The final here, stage right? is here. So I'm going to bring. Still with us? We have. We're almost there. Because we're going to taste in front of you. Finally, I can be useful <laughs> in the kitchen. So I'm going to bring some salted water to a boil. And then I'm going to add the pierogies and we're going to, we're going to boil them probably yes. about four or five minutes. And while that's happening, I'm going to make the sauce. Um, what did you think of the wine? Or maybe you'll tell us. I'm trying it. I'm trying it. Merita. Mm. The alchemy of four different grape varieties blended mm. together. Made by a lady. Of course. She's incredible, Katie. Thank you. And this is the 2018, which is still so young, but youth is not the enemy of taste. Yeah. It's going to go well. I got boiling salted yeah. water. So we just throw them in. We just, well, I don't know, throw, but I'm going to place, yeah. place them in. I'm going to place them in there. And because the pasta is, uh, the dough is a fresh dough, we're just going to cook them about four or five minutes, maybe maximum. Mm -hmm. The filling is also cooked already, so there's no need to cook it any longer. Yes. And then I have a plate here and a um, little strainer to pull them out with. Yeah. Okay. And did you see, dear friends, we use the écume from our friends, Michel Bernardo, who was with us last week. Awesome. We had so much fun selecting new plates and uh, a new I vision. love getting new plates. Oh, it's like, isn't it fun? It's an upgrade. So I'm going to take my huckleberries and just kind of mash them up a little bit just to make sure I get most of the flavor. Yes. And then I'm going to turn the flame down really low or off, and we're going to add... We're going to add some cold butter, and in order to do this so that the so that it stays together, um, if you've ever heard of a beurre blanc, yeah, this is a beurre rouge. Oh. So it's a, a butter, cold butter sauce. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a warm butter sauce where you add cold butter and you keep it emulsified by stirring and stirring and stirring. And so traditionally, this would be made with white wine. That's it. Beurre blanc. Uh, we're going to make a beurre rouge. I love the red one. You, do we need more wine or that's enough? Um, I know you have I want, you, Oh, in my glass or in the sauce? <laughs> well, in your glass. Um, sure, that's that sounds easy. great. See what the sous chef does. I'm not executive sous chef, I'm the under <laughs> sous chef. You want to put a little splash in here? Yeah, sure. Just a little, a little. Maybe a little. Voila. Perfect, perfect. So what inspires you, Rebecca? Because you, you keep uh, evolving so much into all the great things you do. And you evolve within still the work of keep moving. Hospital. Yeah. Keep moving. Don't get stagnant. Yeah. You know, if you get stagnant and you just do the same thing and you're not reading and learning and tasting and traveling, I'm inspired by change. Hmm. Yeah. And what does change mean to you? Change. What is change? Because you know, change is the only constant. Yeah. Well, I, mm. I would agree with that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, well, in the culinary world, mm -hmm. it's discovering all the new things that are happening. So keeping up with trends. There's a really great um, online magazine called Flavor in the Menu. Yeah. And they're really fantastic about showcasing all the different trends and all the things that chefs from around the world are doing. And they, I would sign up for that and, and just read up on it every week. They have a little digest and I think it's fabulous. If you would have been a chef in the other era, who would you have liked to be? In another era. The era when you, you were not born in. Meaning it could be the 1940s, 50s, 60s, it could be the 19th century. Okay. Um, it could be I a think, man. I think, okay, Escoffier. Oh, Why? I love this answer. Okay, so Escoffier. Why Escoffier? Because he's sort of considered, he's sort of like the uh, Neil Young of the culinary world, right? The godfather of yeah. modern cuisine. Because he... I cannot believe you said it's coffee. I'm Why? Sure. Well, because not that many people... Know who he is? Well, yes, and I've read... We honor him a lot in France, as yeah. you know, yeah. uh, for all the reasons you're going to explain. Yeah. But I'm delighted you said that. 
Um, because he had the opportunity to be part of an era where he could travel much more easily than people had in the past. Yes. And so he introduced ingredients from around the world yes. to people that nobody had ever seen before. That's right. What's one of the most basic spices that we use is paprika. Mm -hmm. And he discovered it on a, on a trip to Hungary and brought it back to... That's right to his hotel and served it and it became all the rage. Mm. I mean, now we just think of paprika as the, the one spice that always gets, you know, flung yeah. on the on the plate, but it's actually a really special spice. Um, and in Hungary, they really revere it and in Spain yeah. as well. Um, but I think him because he was the first to really write things down so that yeah. people could understand them. He was the first to introduce a lot of people to ingredients that they never had before. and. Um, his influence, I think, was was amazing. Hmm. So that's to me that that could be somebody well, um, that, that I that someone. I would choose. Hey, and who in your family? Because it's always nice to go back to our own DNA. Mm -hmm. Who did make you who you are today? You think? Is well, it your grandparents. If you were lucky to meet your great grandparents, parents. You know, you know my mother, Ooh. of course, it's a good answer for most chefs, right? Um, Is it? Yeah, because she, she was Israeli yeah. and she not only cooked Israeli food and Middle yeah. Eastern food, but she also cooked Eastern European food because she was Polish and Russian. Yeah. And so I really got a mix of, you know, two very wild and crazy different That's right. you know, cuisines. Plus then... This is a pretty funny thing, actually. When I decided I wanted to be a chef, my father told me at the time it was the worst thing I ever did to him. And I asked him why, and he said, because your mother now wants to compete with you, and she's experimenting with things, and it's just, it's terrible. You, why, did, you know, why did you do this to me? Wow. She would cook, like, crazy stuff. That, this is great. You know, it was a funny story, so. But this is great. <laughs> I thought it was great. Well, a there's, story. um, you know, Israeli food in Paris is, is booming. Mm -hmm. right and they have that whole street that has all the Israeli restaurants. I that's right, in the, mm -hmm. in the Marais. But uh, in addition to that, there's a phenomenal place next to our place in Paris named Balagan. Okay. I'm sure. Balagan. Yeah, Balagan. You know what it means? No. In Hebrew? No. It means like a mess, like a, yeah. like, like, like that thing, like your hand, like I showed you your hand, that's yeah. a Balagan. <laughs> that's like me in the kitchen. <laughs> It's an amazing place and we love going mm. and they keep the, the chefs, whenever you come to France, you'll have to go to Balagan. I would love Not to. that you need to go to France to taste great Israeli food, but it's, they're you so know, good at it. They're so good at and it. And it's happening to be, you know, Star Michelin now and, and Rocket It's Rolling. awesome. And I'm well, delighted. Why don't you give me those two plates right there? Yes. It's about time I do something. Well, you Dear know. friends, we're about to taste. It's the final moment. I want to make sure that the sauce has enough salt. So what's your dream as you serve us mm -hmm. something amazing? What's your personal dream as a young lady okay. doing all the great things you're doing, it's, which mm -hmm. is very commanding, dear friend, in the heart of Napa Valley, all of that. My personal dream is to have a retreat center for wellness that is mm. an educational place to teach people about plant medicine, food, education, wow. as well as host various other types of wellness um, education. And I have this whole idea that the, the gardens would be, um, med there's medicinal gardens that each are devoted to a particular ailment of the body or, or system of the body, the yes. respiratory garden, the, the skin garden, the whatever. And they're all growing these various different things that are used for that. And then the market garden serves all of the educational needs and hosts local farmers that produce meat and food, you know, cheese and yes. dairy and things like that. And so for me, I Great think- Great vision. Yes, and I'd like it to be a place of education and helping people. So my, yeah. I, I mean, I think when we, get, when we circle back around to why it is I wanna be a chef, I think it's helping people appreciate food in all of its different aspects. Wow. So what are we? What are we I can only say I commend you. <laughs> Thank so you. So you know what I'll do? Yeah. I'm gonna. One thing Sorry, I could do is something physical. It's the, but the knob is broken. I know. I know. We had this issue. Well, we don't before. have to. Go I know. <laughs> I was trying to avoid Let's that. Let's do it this way. Mm. So we're gonna put our this our beurre rouge yeah. down on the plate. In opposition to beurre blanc. 
Yes. All colors are welcome in our kitchen. Oh, yeah. We love that. The rouge. God, it's so beautiful. Yeah, the color is amazing. Mmm. Okay. Burgundy deep color. We're going to take our... Um, it's all as much in the presentation, right? A lot of the time it is. I think mm -hmm. it's important to to really pay attention to that if you want to... You know, we eat with our eyes first. Yeah. That's for sure. That's gorgeous. Look at this. Ooh, we're going to have a fun time, dear friends. You're welcome. <laughs> Come and knock at the door. In about 10 minutes, we have more to make. Look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to use it. And then, why, why is uh, Napa Valley such a great cultural center to communicate all what you do? Oh, okay. So Napa Valley has the um, weather, the Mediterranean climate that we have in uh, many parts of Europe or yes. in other parts of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. It We excel at quality products, not just food, but wine and other beverages. We have a lifestyle that is the good life, as people have called it. Yeah. And we enjoy what we do. For so sure. we have the gremolata for a little crunchy texture Stunning. and some brightness. And then I'm going to put some of the fennel pollen a little bit on the plate. What a gorgeous plate. And, and I love the color contrast. Yeah. For You know, I need to tell you, Rebecca, personally, I eat even more with my eyes. For sure. I was taught you never finish your plate. Save some for tomorrow. Mm. Save appetite. My grandmother was always so funny. She was a great chef, big in paprika, in fact, which was very big in the 50s and yeah. 60s in France for the reasons you've explained. Yeah. And she used to say, Jean Charles, if you don't leave the table hungry, you have not appreciated your meal because it's about wanting more and being patient to wait till the next day or the next meal. Oh, yes. The patience till the next day. That's the hard thing, though. For me, I'm thinking about the next meal once the first meal is over. Breakfast is done. What am I having for lunch? Lunch is done. What am I having for dinner? So would you... Would you share to everyone, if you had one last dream to share mm -hmm. for the world, what would that be? Besides the fact that nobody should have be that nobody good goes, or very hungry. That nobody goes hungry. That's, There's enough money in the world that every person should be fed. That's true. I, I agree with that. But besides that, what else? I want to hear the depth of you. Going, not that we haven't in the last 60 minutes. <sighs> but this is a great wish, though. Do you think it's achievable? I think it depends on the person. I think with the right education yes. of mind and body, yes. This idea of being woke, right? Like, once you've seen, you can't unsee. That's right. I would like everybody to be woke. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting the energy. So are we going to try something? I think we are. I'd love to move this, but well, I'm sorry well, about that. Let me move know. this out of the way. Dear friends, this is the last moment because our dear friend, Rebecca, is about, look at how gorgeous it looks. I mean, yeah. can it be better? Can it be nicer? And I know you all want to do it now. Will you share the recipe with us? I will. We honor it. Awesome. So now, shall we try? Let's try. God, ta -ta -ta -ta, ta -ta. You gotta get a little bit of everything. Mm. A little bit of sauce, a little bit of gremolata. Chin chin. Chin chin. chin, -chin. No. Mmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. No. Mmm. Let me try with each one and see which is better. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I'm the cider. I gotta tell you, this is amazing. So maybe you describe to everyone mm -hmm. the flavors we get in. Mm. There's very savory from the confit and the mushrooms, and the huckleberries is sweet, and it pairs perfectly with this. And I think a little toastiness from the hazelnuts is, you know, really pairs nicely with the elk aging here. Really good pairing. Mm. <laughs> Magical. And then let's try with the. Captive. 
Yes, with a captive. What I like about this too is that the texture. You've got the chewy dough, you've got the crunch from the hazelnuts, you've got the unctuousness from the... I'm being excessive. Mm -hmm. I cannot stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun to fruit and wine pair. Great, because of the apples. And the saltiness mm. from the from the confit elevates it. Mm -hmm. Well, what a fun time, with Rebecca! So, Rebecca, people can call you. They can. What's the email or, or the, um, um, the you can, website? The website is All Things Culinary. So it's www all hyphen culinary. Oh, I'm sorry, all hyphen things hyphen culinary. So Perfect. I put the hyphen so you can see it. Will it be written dot com down. and. Or just look up Rebecca Pizer, P E I Z E R, and I'd love to host you and this serve so you and cool. show you what I got. And Rebecca, thank you immensely for being thank with you. us tonight. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. This is so fun. And now we're going to ask you to look at the camera and send everyone a big message. Whatever you wish about life development, inspiration, future. Okay. You know. I would love for everyone to sort of breathe in whatever the world is hurting. Filter it and breathe out love. I love it. I love it too. Thanks, Thanks for you. having me. <laughs> too many more. Okay, thank you.